We're going to go into overdrive next hour. Your local AM and FM should carry it. If not, Infowars.com. I want to move quicker now that Richard had so much knowledge with Rob, Trevor, Chuck, Jackie, Matthew, and others. Rob in Vermont, you're on the air worldwide. Hey, Alex. Love your show, man. Good to have you here. What's on your mind? Well, just a couple things. Uh, I know it might sound a little crazy, but I know that people have... Yeah, your phone's cutting out there, Rob. You got All right. a, Can you hear me better now? Yeah, you got a head. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. I know there were some people saying that it might be because of harp. Now, you had one of you guys on your show saying that it might have been a potential explosion by someone inside setting up. Well, they got hit by a big tsunami and a nine point one earthquake. That, I mean, and, and the harp can. The government says uh, Secretary of Defense ninety seven Cohen said it that the governments are working on earthquake weapons, but we don't know if that's what's happening. That that would just be speculation. Now, the other thing is is that uh, me and my wife went to uh, Walmart up in Littleton, New Hampshire, and uh, we asked the pharmacist for some uh, potassium iodide. The pharmacist looked at me, looked and kind of was looking at me kind of crazy, thinking I was I was nuts. So they didn't have it. So I went to ones here in town. Nobody's got it. Absolutely nobody. Well, it's all over the news. The, attorney, the Surgeon General said, get it if you can yesterday. But see, if it's something that's smart, it's crazy. What? You want? You care? You, you want to be prepared? You're some kind of lunatic. I appreciate your call, Rob. Um, let's talk to Trevor in Canada. You're on the air, Trevor. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I lived in that part of Japan for nearly 20 years. And uh, you know, one of the real tragedies is, of course, Japan has no zoning laws. And, they, you know, they've um, built these factories in these regions to keep them out of the sites of the site of the larger population base areas. And um, it's really quite tragic because now, you know, these rural communities are going to be annihilated because of the location and the placement of these uh, factories. And um, my wife's Japanese. We moved to Canada this year. And... Um, we're following the news from Japan here in Canada, and I can tell you it um, is definitely not on the same level of coverage as we're seeing in the international news. So they're trying to downplay the events. Oh, they're not releasing radiation release numbers radiation. in the two key states. No, as, as you've already noted in the program, it's um, the Japanese media is, is really softening the information, trying to uh, obviously you know prevent a panic. Um, Again, it, it's for well, it's to prevent the government from getting in trouble. And, and what do you think is going to happen here when U.S. designed reactors are involved? Well, it's like uh, Janet Napolitano has said, if you see something, say something, Alex, but not if it's a meltdown, right? I mean, where where's the honest reporting on that? Uh, her slogan. Well, we've tried to call those see something, say something numbers. They never call back. They don't answer. It's all fake. Of course. It's all about paranoia, not trusting each other. But your caller makes a good point here about the agriculture base of Japan. Japan right now is so dependent on imported food right now. And with this disaster, its agricultural capacity is going to be reduced even further, creating uh, less food security. for. Well, the what happened in Ukraine is they just kept, kept still growing on the crops. Radioactive food. And then the people die of cancer. Exactly. And the That's globalists coming. are pleased. That's coming. Anything else, uh, Trevor? Uh, unless you want to know more about the area specifically, because I know it intimately, but uh, know that about covers it, sir. Well, stay there. Let's do a minute or so with you on the other side, giving us a little tips on the area of Fukushima there in northeast Japan. Then we'll talk to Chuck, Jackie, Matthew, and then we're going to break down some of the other big cover-ups going on. Stay with us. Shotgun with us for at least another 30 minutes. I'm going to get into some of the other news that hasn't been covered in the Middle East, the economy, the police state. Uh, recap some of the latest developments with the unfolding disaster and cover-up in Japan with the radiation coming our way. Uh, but we're taking your phone calls right now. Trevor in Canada was going to give us a few more tips because he lived in that area of Japan, just moved to Canada with his Japanese wife in the last year, and you were going to give us some tips about the uh, area. Go ahead, sir. It's a very rural part of Japan, um, to the point they don't even have a major highway system connecting that Fukushima area yet. They've um, just started to build into that region, and that's one of the things that's um, delaying the relief efforts. Um, the only way to get into those areas at this point is to come up the center of the country over the mountainous areas and down some very narrow um, mountainous roads to the coast. Um, what, one thing I am noticing in the international media is they're sort of overplaying the damage to um, 
by saying, for example, Sendai has been devastated. Well, Sendai is a huge city. It's 20 kilometers inland. Those areas weren't actually affected. It's the coastal areas near Sendai. And there's no doubt, not to downplay anything, the uh, coastal towns have been ravaged really badly. We know many of our friends have lost their homes. And so it is a great tragedy. But, again, the bigger tragedy is, um, again, how much information they're hiding from their own people. And these are rural areas. These people are, um, you know, they don't have a lot of means, and they're going to suffer greatly from this. And not just the physical loss of their properties, but, Trevor, but could, their could, futures. Could I ask you a question about the culture of Japan and how, how they're handling this issue? Why, why is it you think that they, there's so much calm and order in Japan, even in the face of, of this catastrophe, whereas um, perhaps in many other regions of the world, it, it wouldn't be the case. It would be a lot more chaotic. What, you live there. What are your, your thoughts on that? Well, one of the reasons, um, you know, to be completely frank, is Japan is very much a, a big brother society now, and they have been for a large part of their history. It's always come down from the top, and people do move and react based on what they're told. But do you think that's and going to so, last? What, if people realize that they're not being told the truth, will that hold out, or will they start to break and rebel against their own government? It's pretty hard to do when that's been a mindset you've grown up with. They didn't rebel for a year when the U.S. bombed every square inch of their cities. Uh, in areas, definitely, you know, the people are smarter than, you know, than we're giving them credit for. They know what's going on, but it, it's hard because you're fighting a system that's been in place for a long time. And um, they're going to have a hard go of it. And I think right. they'll probably ultimately be left to their own... Uh, to deal with it themselves, you know, that area will just be sort of written off. And well, if they the keep trying to evacuate Tokyo with 37 million, that, that's a disaster in and of itself. Thank you, Trevor. Good to hear from you. Real quick call in the, in the rest of this two minutes. Chuck in New York, you're on the air. How you doing, Alex and Mike? Good to talk to you. Um, real quick thing. Uh, well, the first thing, I uh, wouldn't have brought this up, but... Um, I've actually worked in telecommunications, television, for quite a number of years. They've had an Internet kill switch, and they've had a uh, uh, numerous ways, uh, including a black box in every transmitter and cable system that's in this country. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, They're just now getting us ready for its use now. Exactly. But um, my point, I live 25 miles away from a couple of, nuclear reactors. One of them might be a Mark I. It's very, very old. About six years ago, they had a big uh, local blitz where they were, you could go to the pharmacy and get uh, potassium iodate. And everybody could get it. And um, my, actually, my I've had my own. I know where I live. But uh, my wife went and got some, and they were in nice blister packs. And I was out of town working. And when I said, oh, I'd like to pick some up to have in my uh, my pack. And I went there three weeks later after that. And suddenly, no one had it anymore. Yeah, they've had a federal program to encourage people around reactors to get potassium iodate. But it only protects you from one type of radiation. And so, yeah, there's a big program there. Good points, Chuck. Thank you, Jackie. Matthew, Kent, we'll take those calls. Then we're going to get into some other issues and the latest on the nukes. Mike Adams is our guest here. I've had a lot of other news on the police state, the Middle East, the U.S. and world politics, the economy that we're going to be covering at the bottom of the hour. Also the latest. Uh, they've got more of the stricken plants on fire, more explosions, more radioactive steam rising. The Japanese government now being a little more truthful, saying the radiation is so high we may even pull out emergency workers. ABC News reported that this morning, as well as the Kyoto News. Uh, so we told you Friday, when, when a tsunami and earthquakes hit and they don't have power to plants, you're going to have a problem. Then when the one blew up, Saturday I said, fallout. The media said, no, there's no problem. Nothing's been in the, in, in the internal containment facility breached. Now they admit that did happen. Then on Monday, Fukushima 3, Mark 1, plutonium-based plant, blew sky high in a giant mushroom cloud. Now we learn on top of all of them they were storing Hundreds of thousands. I can't believe this number. Over 600,000 rods. We don't know how many got blown, but we know that they had hundreds of thousands stored above the Mark 1 into the sky. Everything they touch then becomes radioactive. Sure, they're heavy. Their particles may not float across. but They're going into the ocean, but they touch other things and makes them radioactive. 
uh, and our media is saying, hey, NCAA, uh, Obama spent an hour and a half this morning with his picks, national press conferences, tell, and he said this is a nice diversion from what's happening, as if it's good to be diverted. The Pentagon knows what's going on with the radiation. They've got aircraft there. They're telling the public, oh, we might send an aircraft tomorrow to do some tests. They don't want you to know the Japanese government is not releasing the radiation detection information in the two states or prefects as they're known, the prefectures as they're known, in the middle of Fukushima. We can put that map back on screen. They say, still gathering data. They have it everywhere else in high levels of radiation, but they're, uh, we're not going to not release that right now. I don't want to create a panic. The winds are blowing right at us. That's the big uh, issue, my friends. And here's the article, Obama fiddles while Fukushima burns. That's prisonplanet.com, infowars.com, Obama plays uh, while Japan begs for help. Uh, Mike Adams, again, what do you make of that before we go back to calls? Well, the whole situation really demonstrates how fragile our entire civilization has become. So many interdependencies. For example, the nuclear power plants there in, in Japan, they were dependent on the power grid to run the generators once the power failed. And the generators were required to circulate the coolant that would keep the rods cool, and those failed because of the tsunami. These interdependencies extend to the food supply, to uh, food sources, to the soils, the farming soils, to just every area of life, medicine, uh, e even education, even how we raise our children or have babies, it's all interlinked. And that's one thing that this, this crisis has to get us thinking about. How are we going to eat food if it's irradiated? Uh, how are the Japanese people going to survive if they can't use a, a huge portion of their country for the next 10 centuries? And any time people come up with reasonable, sustainable ideas that are local, the feds block it, just like all over the world, not just uh, here in the U.S., federal governments, central governments will give you a tax incentive to put solar in, but only hook it into the larger grid. That's right. And then they won't come out and give you an inspection most of the time if it's your own solar. So it's all about keeping us dependent. They're not really supporting independent living or independent thinking for that. The matter. only way to have a clean, safe society is that you run it yourself locally and you can watch it and you're in control. Anything big and centralized always deteriorates because those on top can't run it, don't want to run it, get greedy, get delusional. That's absolutely right. This is why freedom is the answer, really, if you get down to it. Local control, uh, local freedom, um, and by control I mean that the locals are controlling their own communities and towns and, and food supply and so on. Local food security, local barter and exchange using honest money systems, uh, local medicine where doctors can actually make their own decisions without being thrown in jail by the feds. Freedom is the answer. Freedom is always the answer. On this issue as well as just about every other issue that, that we talk about or that you talk about on your show, freedom is the answer. Same thing for Internet freedom, open source, locally controlled, not centralized by Homeland Security. I exactly. The diversity of information on the Internet creates safety because it gives people more options of where they can get information. If we didn't have an internet, they'd be telling us no one was hurt and there was no radiation. Right, think about it. If, if this were 1985 and we didn't have the internet, this would be a completely different story. Uh, people wouldn't be able to listen to you as much as they do now. People wouldn't be getting information from me or others out there who are writing about this, and they wouldn't be getting the whole story. They'd be getting the government version, which is sterilized and watered down and engineered to create a, 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 a specific spin message with a design, with, a, with a, an intention that people won't panic and won't pay attention and won't stress the supply lines by getting prepared, for example. We're going to talk more about that. And you know what? Let's just take you all the way to the end of the hour. Is your <laughs> wife cool with that? <laughs> I think so, yeah. She needs some food or something? No. You, you no, always we, bring her own. We bring our own superfoods, actually. We're always, we're always drinking. We'll keep you to 50 after then because there's too much to cover. We'll go over this other news with you, too. 